get on with the show here. Let me get the overhead up. All right, this is a piece of Aspen. It's been sitting on my shelf over there for a few years, so it's pretty well good and dry. It's not going to move on me at all. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my parting tool. Oh, and I'm going to make a couple of... I'm going to, I'm going to true up this part because it's kind of cut on an angle. And I'm going to create a tenon on this part to put into the chuck. So here we go. It's best just to true all this stuff up as best you can to give it more balance. Right, I'm going to change my glasses. I need some stronger ones. There we go. Now I can see what I'm doing better. So we're just going to do some light cuts here. Pretty much all the way down to the tail stock. We're just evening out the cut to where it's running straight and true, which it is. And then I'm going to come on to this end. I'm going to create a tenon. It's nice to be able to have a, I have a spur center. It's a stub center right, right there inside the chuck which makes it easier to judge how big of a tenon I want and I'm right there where I need to be. Just gonna take one more light cut here, make it, the tenon a little bit deeper, not much. And then I need to bring it in a little bit because it's a dovetailed set of jaws. And I'll let it sit right into that chuck. And I see I still got a bunch of wax on this end, so I'm going to just remove all that. This is the end where the... This is where the natural edge bark will be at this end. So you want a nice clean bark. Still got a little bit more to go. Now, if you guys have any questions, just I've got a real loud audio system in here, and I'll I'll be able to hear most of it. Your questions, if you want it to ask, or if you want, you can type it in the chat, or go under reactions at the bottom of the screen, and you can raise your hand in the participants window which I should open and it'll put your name right at the top if you have any questions yes yeah your video your audio is great but how is my audio your audio is fine I can hear you fine it's just it's just a it's just a little it's a little choppy but I can hear what you're saying So I got all that wax that was on the end here done. So I'm going to take this out of the center here. And I'll just cut that off. I didn't cut it thin enough just to snap it. And there goes the piece onto the floor. All right. Just give me one second here. There we go. Side the tail stock out of the way. And now these little spurs step centers that go in the chucks are really, really, really handy. That way you don't have to take your, your chuck on and off constantly to, if you want to put something in between centers. So we're going to chuck this up into the jaws here. And as you can see, I left a nice flat shoulder there. It's dovetailed slightly, and it's very important to have that flat because that's where your piece is going to rest, and it gives you the most support. 
when you're turning a piece like this because it's all just hanging out on it out on its own there so you want a, a lot of good support on there this aspen is a little soft so i need to turn it tighten it up pretty good there all right so i am going to remove grab my spindle gouge i'm just going to remove this part here I need to drop my tools Pull rest down a little bit there. It should be right on the line. Yep. We'll just get rid of this. So now is the time to decide how much bark you want to leave on there I, I excuse me oh how long is the piece yeah hold on okay I need to find a pencil my grandson's got out here today and last night I'll just mark it with a marker. It'll be easier. So I'll be turning this part away anyway. Um, this piece is probably about six inches long. Pretty close. But the finished piece, because I got about a half inch into the chuck there, thereabouts, it's gonna, it's, it's, and I make the base, it's probably going to come out to more like a five inch goblet when I'm done. Yep. So I'm going to decide how much bark I, I want on the... So I'm going to just put a mark right there. That's how I'm going to cut that mark away. So I'm going to leave all the bark that's on this side of the line. And the first thing I need to do is start shaping the cup. Just a tool rest, make sure everything is locked well. I'm going to lower this down a little bit here. And this is going to, I'm going to try to shape this as a nice OG curve into there. Here we go. I'm holding the tool at about 45 degrees. The, the flute at 45 degrees from the top. I'm just going to do a nice curve here. Take some of the back wood away. These are pretty much roughing cuts. This stuff is really powdery. It's a dry aspen. And I'm going to take a look, see and how much bark is left on there. Okay, so we got a little bit more to take off right there. You can see how it's nice and uneven, which is what you want for a natural edge. It gives it a nice look to it. But I still have a little bit of a red mark there. So I need to take just a little bit more of that bark off. And I'm gonna bring that cut around. And all this bark is gonna come right off of there. And I'm just doing this just to give me an idea for when I hollow the inside. And I take out the center portion of the end grain. How my tool should follow along. So I'm turning. It's 45. And now I'm just going to lift up my tool. 
and give it a twist at the same time. And we got a nice little This will be towards the bottom of the cup. I don't want to take too much more off because I still need to take the inside out. And I'm going to do some finishing cuts here. I believe it's. I have a 50 on this one. But I use this this spindle gouge mainly for roughing, and then for finishing cuts, I'll grab one that has like a 45 degree, so I can get into the tighter spaces and make a smoother cut. So I'm going to stop there. Yep. See how much bark we have left there. All right. I don't want to go any more bark because otherwise I'll be taking it off right in this thin spot. Um, for those of you that, if you're not asking a question, if you guys can mute your mics, because I'm getting a lot of background talk. I'm not talking to you, Casey. I, 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 there's a few people there. So I, I've got myself a... I believe it's a, I don't know what happened to my ruler I had up here, but let me grab a different one. I believe this is a half inch Forstner bit. Oh, one inch? Yeah. It's a one inch Forstner bit. And I'm going to use this to drill out the center part. Just to give it a start, a head start on the hollowing of the end grain. So I'm going to turn down the lathe. You don't want to be going like, get it around. My speed control has been really touchy lately. I think I'm going to need a new one. It's about 500 RPMs there. And you, you want to hold on to your, your drill chuck your bit chuck just to keep it from spinning because sometimes it will and I'm just going to drill about halfway you want to pull it in and out a few times just to get the the chips out I'm just going to create a it's about halfway down in there that should be good. This is going to allow you to get the, your spindle gouge inside. And you can, I'm going to switch cameras here. See which one's going to be the best view. And I need to adjust that just a little bit here. I'm going to bring my tail stock around to the front. And we're going to make sure that when you put the your spindle gouge into the middle, it is parallel because we're going to do some back cuts. And you don't want the tool up here. A little high, if your handle's a little low, that's probably fine. But if you have your tool handle up, it's going to cause you some some catches for sure. And drilling it out saves a lot of time on the. And I'm at about 1800 RPMs if anybody's interested in that part. So the first thing I'm going to do is. Well, let's see if I can. Uh, I'm see if this one will. Nope. Side shoulder. I'm looking for the best view for you guys so you can see what I'm doing here.
Where is it? Sugar. Oh, I'll just go through them here and see where we're at. Nope. I'm just going to do the side view. Seems to be the best view there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So what I want to do is just bring the tool. Oh, that's a little blurry. Get the focus going here. No, I'm just trying to get the, the, the trying to get the focus in. I would back out, maybe back out just a little bit. There you go. Yeah, right there. All right. So that's, that's, that's good. So uh, what I want to do is I'm going to bring the tool in right here on the edge at 45 degrees, and I'm going to bring it out towards me. If you were to bring the tool in, you can, but you're going to be fighting the end grain. This is a much easier cut. Let me bring the tool out. And I'm just following the outside shape. And that squealing you're here is it's because the wood is getting thin right there. So I'm going to stop the lathe and see where we're at. Okay, we are getting there. A little bit more on the end of the rim here. We want to get the rim done first. That way there's a lot of wood in the bottom to support your cuts. So now we can start taking out some of that center meat there of the end grain. Remember to follow the shape of your goblet. I'm going to stop the lathe and use my fingers just to feel it. Your fingers can tell you a lot as far as how thick you are on a piece. So i got a little bit more to go right in this area. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Your, your smaller all right. How's that? Better? Uh, yeah. Or I can do this one. Uh, that one's got. A Hold on one second. I'm going to I'm going to move something real quick. Believe it or not, I can do move the cameras around. <laughs> yeah, but now we're seeing uh, more of the back of the lathe. I know. I'm going to adjust that. Yeah, yeah, there... Give me one second okay. here. I'm going to adjust that. There we go. And I'm going to... Yeah, that's better. The other one, 
Oh, okay. Right, I need to move this camera a little bit here. There we go. How's that? I'm back out just a little bit. No, no, no. You guys want to be able to see what I'm doing in there. You got two two views there. Okay. I, I think you're fine. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. How's that? Better? So I'm almost to the thickness I want. Yeah. So now I'm just going to go a little bit deeper there. I've got a little ways to go. So I got that shape. And I am almost to the bottom. So I'm just going to start shaping the bottom there, making it nice and round. Give it a nice look. So I am going to grab a yeah, small round nose scraper to finish off the bottom here. But I need to raise the tool rest because you do need to have this at a, these tools at an angle. You don't want to go straight in. You want your handle raised a little bit. And you go up just a hair more. And this is so I can shape the bottom nice and round. And if you ever get one of those divots, the best way to get rid of it is to come up from underneath and then move your tool towards you. And that'll get rid of those little pesky little... It's not really a divot. It's one of those little pointy high spots in the middle there. And let's see where we're at here. Yep, that's a... Very nice curve in the bottom. And we should be right where I want to be. Yep. So now we can get back to the outside. Yeah, I need to raise the tool rest just a little bit there. If you always remember, if, if you do remember, to turn off your lathe whenever you move your tool rest, especially when it's this close to the chuck. So you don't want your the end of your, your tool rest to get caught in one of those jaws there. All right, before turning the lathe back on, make sure everything's tight. Give it a spin. Yeah, I can turn up the speed just a little bit more here. So I'm at like about 2,000 RPMs now. Lower that. And I need to adjust that tool rest a little more. Yeah, I'm going to put the overhead back up. Thank you. I need to do something on my computer here real quick. There we go. So I'm going to finish the bottom of the, the cup here. So you want to remove a lot of this waste wood. Give you a lot of working room here. And if you watched my tool, it's pretty much almost straight up and down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it in and give it a twist and raise the handle at the same time. And we can just clean that up a little bit here. Ride that bevel and clean up those cuts.
Get up that OG curve here. Okay, so I'm going to bring in another tool to clean that up. This one should probably do it here. This one's got a nice longer bevel. It's like a 45 degree bevel. Which allows you to ride the bevel. The, the This allows you to ride the bevel of your tool and give it a cleaner cut. I'll get my roughing spindle gouge here. That's a more of a 50 degree grind on it, which allows me to take more wood off quicker. some of those high spots on the cup portion here there we go so now I'm going to bring me in a detail gouge it has a very nice long bevel on it it allows you to get into tight spaces Let's see if I can get this up there you can see how long that is there it allows you to get into the more detailed areas of your piece which is what I want to do here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bead right at the bottom of the cup. Just a twist and turn. And then we'll bring that down. As you see the tool turning, it's hard to see on the camera. I'm going to bring that, my tool rest down just a hair. Whenever I bring in the tool inward into that center there, I'm also raising the tool handle. I'm going to make that be just a little bit smaller there. And a lot of these, right into the center there and get rid of these little tool marks. I'll ride the bevel a little bit better. And some of these high spots, you know, you know the Sandpaper is going to take that out. So what I want to do is bring in my roughing gouge again. Well, it's not really a roughing gouge, but it's, I used to rub down my spindles like this. I'm going to create a cove. So I'm going to get rid of a lot of this waste wood here. Just need to drop that down and match the other side. And we're going to grab my detail gouge again, make a nice little turn right into the piece there. I'm going to clean this up here. And grab a nice little if you have a really nice round nose on your spindle gouge, it allows you to make these coasts rather easy. So you can follow the just call, follow the curve of your the end of your tool there. So we'll 
just going to bring this down and we're going to start making the base here. And I'm just going to peel this wood in there. I got the tool almost at 90 degrees or 3 o'clock. More like about 2.30. I'm just going to bring this cut right up into here. Add a nice little detail into the, the base. Do that same thing here. And we're going to grab that detail gouge. And we need to clean up these little edges here. Make them nice and crisp. Another twist into the wood, just like that. And we're going to create another OG here coming up from the base. It's a nice little in and out curve here. <laughs> or it's called an OG also. Let's do some cleanup here. <coughs> Look at this stuff is dusty. I've got a ambient dust collector on my ceiling back there but man it's still not kicking it's not dragging enough of this dust in all right so let's see where we're at here so you can see it kind of chopped that up a little bit when I was doing that cut this way so I still need to do another cleanup cut right here because there are some broken parts there we don't well we want to keep that natural there and that's what I was aiming for is to keep the bark on that this is more this is a decorative piece more than a Clean this little cove up a little more here. Just going to bring this in a little bit. Make it a little, little more tighter. Same with this. Grab my detail gouge so I can go in here a little deeper. Where that bead is. Give it a little more of an elegant look. Should've, this should have cleaned that those edges up nice here. Do some scraping cuts coming out there. And we're going to see where we're at. Yeah, see, I, if, you, if you back, if you bring your tool in this way, if you're coming this way, you're going to get that choppy look on the, on the piece. If you bring your cleanup this way, it's going to make a nice sharp edge right there. And I see I need to clean this area up a little bit. Give it a nice little twist there. And a little high spot right in there. So we can leave the bark on the base here. So I'm going to bring in my parting tool. Just leave a little bit of that bark there. I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of sanding, but we got a little knot in there. You never know what you're going to get when you... Start cutting into a piece of branch wood. So I'm just going to touch up with some sandpaper that bead right here. 
And I can probably go in just a little bit deeper with my detail gouge too. So we're just gonna get that edge of that sandpaper up in there. Just a real quick sand here, nothing major. Just to clean it up. This is just 220 I'm using. This is pretty soft wood, so you don't really need to go to like 100 degree grit to start. Get rid of those, some of those high spots on the cup. So I noticed I could go a little further in under that bead there. So that's what I'm going to do. Grab my detail gouge. And I'm just going to touch that in. There we go. That's a little bit of a better detail. Clean up that cove a little bit. Get that sandpaper back down in there. So now we are ready to do the base. Do the parting off. Yeah, much better with the sanding. You know, while I'm at it, I'm just going to do a real quick sand on the inside here. Just watch your fingers. All right. I'm going to be bringing my tail stock or my tail tool rest in a little closer here. So I'm going to turn off my lathe. Grab my parting tool. And we'll just make a slight cut here. See how much bark is left. That's good. So we'll just start whittling this away here. And you just want to work your way down. You don't want to do a straight cut all the way to the bottom because your tool will bind so what I'm gonna I'm gonna do a light so I'm doing is cutting towards I'm putting a curve towards the center on the bottom so the piece will sit flat on the table just a slight concave on the bottom So we are almost ready to, we're going to part this off here, and we will sand this off later. And there we go, we have a nice little natural edge goblet. <laughs>